Chats! Welcome back. If you're new here, I'm Rebecca. Thank you for joining me in my kitchen. Today I'm going to be making something a little bit Scottish. Tomorrow is Robert Burns' night. And Robert Burns was a famous Scottish poet. He did a lot of a lot of their things. So they celebrate his birthday every year on the 25th of January, all round about. And um, yeah, so Researching this today, I found that haggis, so far as I know, is the only food meat-related that actually was never on the ration. And once you look at the ingredients, you can understand why. So we're going to stay clear of that, and we're going to go for a very nice shortbread. Um, the recipe that I'm going to be using is from this little booklet here and you know what the Ministry of Food is like chaps you know we all know what they're like they will throw potato into absolutely everything why not shortbread so that's the recipe that we're going to be working with so yeah um, my curiosity got the better of me I couldn't wait to share it with you guys of course I had to try it before I I made a video for you um, because I don't like to bring you stuff that's not worth it, you know. So I it, it passed the test. Well, it passed the, the chicken test. Shakes. It's got it's got a wing up. It has, it has got no thumbs. It's a wing. <laughs> so if it's good enough for the chicken. It's good enough for us. Um, now I didn't have any rice flour to make with it yesterday, so I just used. Uh, plain flour throughout and I think that's made it a little bit a little bit moist so when it first came out the oven it smelled really nice and I just couldn't wait I was like straight in straight in and it you, you couldn't taste the potato you can't you, you honestly you can't taste it and um, it just tasted like shortbread but it, it's it's not a it's not a solid shortbread like you buy in the boxes at Christmas. It's 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 like a it's like a sponge cake and shortbread made a baby and came up with this. So yeah, when you see the ingredients, you sort of think, yeah, okay, I can see how that works. But yes, no, with this, if you can if you can see, um, it's got sort of you can see how it's a bit damp, so I don't think it would be a much of a storer unless you baked it really thin. Um, but this time round, I am going to be using some rice flour as per instructed. I didn't have any rice flour in, so what I did was I've used my my blender, my whizzer, and I have basically whizzed, 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 whizzed some rice, just, just some normal long grain rice, and then sifted it to make two ounces of flour. Um, when it comes to doing that though, you must remember to wash your rice because sometimes bagged rice is um, covered in chemicals or something. It's like preservatives, you know, it's to keep the rice good within the bag. And that will naturally wash away with cooking in the water however we're not doing that so just make sure that you wash your rice and dry it thoroughly before you whiz it and turn it into flour or you could nip down the shops you know and make life a little more simple for yourself but either way you do it you know you do you so I think we'll crack on with the actual making so if you will just bear with me one moment I will move you so down you go and tilt. I've managed to attach my phone to my camera's tripod and it's being held on with an elastic band. So <laughs> we're making do here chaps. <laughs> it really is. So there we are. That should probably just about do it. Right then. So the ingredients that we have to work with today are, bring down the list, we have three ounces of margarine, there is 
two ounces of rice flour, a pinch of salt, a little almond flavouring. I don't have almonds, so I've had to put vanilla in. It's probably why it tastes so much like a cake. Um, where are we at? Da, 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 da. Little almond flavouring. Four ounces of warm mashed potato. Three ounces of plain all-purpose flour. And two ounces of sugar. So the first thing we're going to do is cream the fat and the sugar together. So, fairly simple. So marge going in, sugar going in. There we are. Right, gosh, this marge is. It's, and maybe I should have left it in the room for a bit. It's come straight out of the fridge. Bit of a mistake there, Rebecca. Never mind. Never mind. Carry on, dear. Elbow. Elbow grease, darling. Earn your shortbread. Yes, tomorrow night I'm going to the community centre and they're putting on a Burns night sort of meal for everyone. And they're going to be have a bagpiper and yeah, there'll be a few a few Scots there, you know, so but there isn't a bar, so it won't get too rowdy. <laughs> Just plenty of tea. <laughs> or coffee if you're so inclined. Right. Just bear with me one moment. Yeah, I definitely should have taken that out of the fridge. Never mind, it'll 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 do. Um, so next, add the mashed potato. Beat well, okay. Now it does call for warm mashed potato. However, yesterday I found that when I put only the tiniest bit of warmth of mashed potato in with the marge, it just melted and went to slop. Is that the right word I'm looking for? Anyway, yeah, no, so I'm going to have a go at just cold this time, even though I probably should be following the recipe. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go with cold, I think, so let's just, I don't know whether it just might, might make it easier for rolling, you know? So we're gonna combine that. starting to sound a bit like it's combining properly. I think it's probably the more the more you do it the more nicer the shortbread will be. But Okay, so two ounces of homemade rice flour going in. Now, I googled this because I wondered why, especially during the war, would they have such an exotic, is that the right word for it? But why would they have such a unique ingredient going in? And I found that rice flour is a lot more absorbent than normal flour. So, with you having lots of liquid in your mash, and then potentially a hit making it go and make the marge go all runny, which I've really found difficult to work with, to be honest, which is why I've not put warm mash in this time. 
So I thought, well, actually, if it's a very absorbent flower, then that kind of makes sense if you're dealing with something that's quite a wet, a wet matter because you, you're dealing with four ounces and then the, all the other bits and bobs come to about 10 ounces altogether. So it's a, it's a third of the ratio of the shortbread. So maybe there is a lot of liquid that just needs absorbing, you know? And then, very lastly, uh, what is it? now take out the spoon and with the hands lightly press the flour containing a little baking powder. They didn't mention that in the ingredients list, but I've remembered to put it in. Um, into the mixture. Right, okay. So, take out the spoon. I just can't help myself, I just have to. Make sure it's, it's, it's as good as we can be. So, taking out the spoon, slash, fork and then putting in our flour containing a little bit of baking powder there we go right now so we're going to I, I'm using this bit here I think that this bit is the coolest part of your hand is from what I believe. But I mean, it, it, you're you're basically trying to press it into the the mixture in the hopes that it, it turns into something that you can work with when you roll it out. So I'm just going to rotate the bowl like this, and hopefully it sort sort of. I mean, it just kind of compact. So, but, yeah, I mean, I think I'm getting this right. Take out spoon and with hands lightly press the flour containing a little baking powder into the mixture. Yeah, okay. And then it says to roll out and bake. I mean, I personally would be getting in there and mixing all together and everything and I think towards the end yesterday I had to make a bit of a concoction of it because um, like I said I mean it went so sloppy yesterday it was so runny it was just ridiculous but anyway so let me let me try and sort of scoop this out I can't help it I just want to just knead it Again, you never know whether this is going to make, like, whether it's supposed to be making a light sort of shortbready type thing, but who knows, right? Anyway, so there's our ball of dough with plenty more in the bowl. I mean, with these ingredients, because, you know, we haven't got anyone from of the age to show oh yes, you're getting it right. You just sort of have to guess at these things a lot of the time. And also what you find with heritage recipes or heritage knitting patterns is that an awful lot of stuff is assumed that you're going to know what they mean or that you're going to know how to do something. So you can only sort of guess really. But anyway... So I haven't worked it in like I normally would. I've just sort of pressed down within the bowl and then when I feel like it's made a decent pack, I've basically put my fingers down and then I've scooped around until eventually I've worked a, 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 bow, a, a ball of dough and then I've scooped it out. So that's where we're at now. So I think... All I've got, oh, I mean, that's fallen apart. Right, okay. Well, 
We may have to do a bit of um, a bit of shortbread surgery here, chaps. But in principle, that's the idea that we're going with. Um, it just says to roll out and bake. So I will be baking that in a moderate oven for about 25 minutes is what I've found. And yes, if you would like it crisp, then roll it thin. And if you'd like it to last maybe an extra day or two, then definitely roll it thin. But other than that, roll it as you wish and enjoy your shortbread. And I'll catch up with you again soon. Bye.